let's let's break down the environment just a little bit more, right? So how does one create that environment and why is it so important to have a good environment to make it so that you get more referrals and most importantly, the right ones? Yeah, if you don't have a long, the long game in mind, all your decisions um, lead to you not building that environment. The environment is about value, 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 give, 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 professional, 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 share, 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 network, network, synergy, uh, plan. It, it's about being coordinated. It doesn't mean everything's perfect and it doesn't everything mean everything knocks the socks off of somebody from uh, uh, from how you would traditionally um, measure something, ROI, for example. I mean the traditional form of ROI, which is return on investment. <clears throat> we think about ROI as return on influence, yeah. and that's really what an environment does. So you need to think about all those things. You need to have a game plan, and you need to have somebody helping you understand uh, how to build that environment. But if you just want to do it on your own, just think about how do I create more value for my customers and how do I put that out into the world? That is the biggest thing. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Haller. And with my partner, Kirk Lowe, today, this is part two of Death by Referrals. A couple of quick things before we start. The first one is, this is our second take on, on this podcast because uh, we recorded it yesterday and it wasn't the quality that we were really hoping for. Uh, so we're re-recording it today, and I'm telling you that because I want you guys to know we're 450 episodes into the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast, and we are still doing whatever we possibly can to get better, stronger, faster, and smarter. Now, what happened last episode uh, was, um, you know, we really talked about uh, some, some of the things that you need to know about mindset for referrals. And Kirk's going to talk about that in a minute, but today we got three major points that we're going to be covering. The first one is how important and how you need to appreciate the environment to start building in a great environment and nurturing that environment for referrals. Specifically, number two, please make sure that you have a process. We're going to talk about that today making sure that you use great tactics that are proven to leverage the environment to get more referrals. And last but not least, we're going to talk about how to execute that process, rinse, lather, and repeat over and over again to make sure that you are going to be able to do this really, really well. So Kirk, welcome to the show, man. Round two, baby. Wow. <laughs> it was my, it, I, it, it was my, it was me. It was me. <laughs> It wasn't that. Everybody knows Matt. Everybody, as soon as you said that, it was like, oh, man, Kirk must do it. <laughs> well, hey, um, listen, it's all about getting back on the horse, brother. Okay, so let, let's talk yeah. about, uh, refresh everybody what we talked about in the last uh, part one of this two-part referral, uh, Death by Referrals podcast. Yeah, so the, the the main point of Death by Referrals is getting too many skeptics into your pipeline or getting too few uh, and too few fans. Um, so too few fans is too few uh, referrals, um, and, and too many skeptics is also a problem, but also too many, too, uh, too few fans <laughs> as they start off here today. The second uh, point is winning at referrals is about creating an environment for a system to thrive. And you need to understand that environment, um, and how to build it. And having the environment is really, uh, having all the things that add value to your prospects world uh, and you prove it and you add value to the world. So when you understand how to create that environment, referrals will flow. You will solve the death, the concept of death by referrals, which is either uh, too many skeptics or too few fans. What it amounts to is either uh, a few fans coming in, which is the cadence that you want for your business, or you'll have even more fans. Um, if you dedicate to build this environment, know this, that environment is not built overnight. It's pr the biggest reason that most people fail at marketing because they're on 90 day or 180 day cycles trying to get better. And they're talking to silo practitioners in the marketing space or in coaching space. And that's the biggest problem. So that environment takes years to build. 
And it really centers around the idea of influence, which is what we talk about all the time. Yeah. Well, let, let's let's break down the environment just a little bit more, right? So how does one create that environment and why is it so important to have a good environment to make it so that you get more referrals and most importantly, the right ones? Yeah, if you don't have a long the long game in mind, all your decisions um, lead to you not building that environment. The environment is about value, 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 give, 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 professional, 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 share, 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 network, network, synergy, uh, plan. It, it's about being coordinated. It doesn't mean everything's perfect. And it doesn't everything mean everything knocks the socks off of somebody from uh, uh, from how you would traditionally um, measure something. Mm -hmm. ROI, for example. I mean the traditional form of ROI, which is return on investment. <clears throat> we think about ROI as return on influence. Yeah. And that's really what an environment does. So you need to think about all those things. You need to have a game plan. You need to have somebody helping you understand uh, how to build that environment. But if you just want to do it on your own, just think about how do I create more value for my customers and how do I put that out into the world? That is the biggest thing, yeah. right? So we have a great example from uh, yesterday on social media. One of our posts was we had a comment from uh, somebody who's a client, but she's also a peer in the industry serving advisor. Her name is uh, Adri. Uh, she works for Femex Advisor, or she works for, she owns, <laughs> founded. <laughs> and she <clears throat> talked about how, the pod, how instrumental the podcast has been in helping her uh, find uh, clients and build, built her uh, her following. And she had a comment from somebody that said, "That's how I met you." So I reached out oh. and said, "Hey, that's how you met Adri through your podcast. How did that come about?" She said, "Well, she listened to Adri on our podcast, which is really cool. I wasn't expecting that, but not surprised." And what ended up happening is she told us that. That's how she got introduced to Adri, listened to our podcast, really kind of fell in love with what she does and knew she was perfect person to serve her. And um, I don't know how long they've been working together, but it sounds like it's going really well. So what, what's the point of all that? When I got back to her, I said, it's not the podcast, Adri, that, that's killing it for you. It's you. You bring value. You know your stuff. Yeah. You, you're building or have built an environment for people to want to, to get to know you, to understand what you stand for, what your niche is, who you serve, what you do. It's it's out in the world. Yeah. And when you add value over and over again, people are attracted to that. So she's created an environment um, for those things. And really, if you think about it, that was a referral. Yeah. Right. Listen to, it's a great reason to have a, to be valuable, to get on other people's podcasts OPP, as Matt calls it, and that was a, an incredible opportunity for Adri to meet new people. And because she's got her own podcast, like come back, come back and listen to hers. That wouldn't have happened if if she wasn't putting herself out there. No, Adri is such a beautiful example of of of, of also you know one other thing that we say on this podcast all the mm -hmm. time is unapologetically be yourself and be your own loud right. Adri is Adri. Uh, Adri is consistent across every part of of her content creation. But if you don't have parts of your content creation, if you're only singularly focused on one specific tactic, that doesn't create a referral to. Do you mind talking about silos a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I mentioned it earlier today. I, I talk about it all the time. Is if you've got one vendor or one expert or one tactic that you're implementing all alone, it, it's not the environment that you need. It doesn't help build the environment. It's one piece of the environment. You have to be doing a bunch of things, um, and Adri does that. So she's got really good at email. Uh, she does video. Uh, mm -hmm. She's uh, all over social media. Uh, multiple platforms. She does a lot. I think she does a lot of webinars. She's got she a webinars. She does speaking. She's got white papers, speak. right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So she's got that, that going on and it's re- it's, it's, it's not possible with a singular focus or even a couple of things. They need to all work together. That's the environment. So figure it out. It's not all, um, it is, it is effort and time and, and in a lot of cases money, cause you can't do it on your own, but build slowly, chip away at it. If, if that's how you have to do it, but, but do it like get started. Yeah, and that's this is a big reason why referrals fail is when they don't have that environment. You know, how does I think her name was uh, Viola? How does Viola ever meet Adri? Yeah, what a shame, right? Viola is online, right? Advocating. Guess what that means, right? She's advocating for Adri online. Adri's advocating for us online. What does that mean? They're fans. That's that what we've been trying fans. to tell people for years mm-hmm. now, how important it is to have those fans. Yep. So if you're not there, you need to figure out how you're going to get there. That's that's your marketing challenge ahead of you. Don't wait to get started. Get started. If you're already started, amazing. Be consistent at it. Don't stop. Mm-hmm. Don't give up. But be But be honest with yourself. What can you get across the finish line? What do you need other people to help you with? And I can tell you that the reality is, is once you get started to build that environment, you're, you're going to be take it to another level all the time. And it, it never really stops. It's not like you decide you're going to do four things, five things, and two years down the road, you're just happy with those. You're going to make them better all the time. Yep. But that's okay because you'll have the energy for it when you get there. Yeah. So... You know, we're talking about environment here and the reality is, is a lot of these things in the environment relate back to Cialdini's principles of influence. And we know now that these are seven principles (laughs) it used to be six. So Matt is, if you can explain how these relate to the environment, I think that'll really help bring this all together for everybody. Yeah. And I want everybody, and I, I feel like I've broken record and I'm sure some of you are like, dude, I've already bought the book, buy the book, right? Buy Dr. Robert Cialdini, seven principles of influence. Uh, it, it's ethical influence. This is all research based. This isn't, you know, philosophy. This is application. He's an applied mm-hmm. psychology PhD, and he wanted to see how you get people to do the things that you want them to do that's in their best interest. And the first thing that a lot of advisors don't pay attention to is the principle of reciprocity. This is the foundation of all of the environment that we're going to be talking about the rest of this show. If you do something nice for somebody, they socially and psychologically are obligated and they even have a strong desire to reciprocate to do something nice for you. So a lot of times you as the business owner have to prime the pump and do something nice for somebody. And they're very, very quickly, as long as an ask happens, you still have to ask. They are going to be much more likely to do something nice for you. Next, Kirk and I talk about making sure and actually these two are going to go together which is commitment and consistency and social proof we kind of merge these together uh in our seven rocket boosters of influence but one of the reasons why we merge these together is because social proof is all about consistency in our world in the world of marketing you have to be communicating to your ideal clients and prospects in the media they prefer while they're there with organic content and you have to do it consistently uh in the adri example is a perfect example right how do you continue to stay in front of viola well you put out great highly valuable educationally based content give away everything because here's the deal viola doesn't know what adri knows but she knows enough about what adri knows that she wants to do business with Adri, and that's exactly what content marketing uh, is is really all about. All right, so social proof again. Listen, uh, just because somebody says, "Hey, uh, you know, Jane told me to call Kirk," the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Google Kirk. I'm going to check out his social media profiles. I'm going to check out you know what he's posting, when he's posting, where he's posting. I'm going to go to the website. I'm going to see what other free resources there are. Those are really, really important. And by posting and having the social proof out there you stay top of mind, omnipresent and ever present with the people who are consuming your content. 
The next principle is authority. And, and I think a lot of you as advisors take this for granted. You have alphabet soup after your name. Nobody knows what that means, man. Nobody knows what a CHFC and a COU and a, and a, and a, uh, what, you know, a CFP. I mean, God, there's so many of them nowadays. Um, so, so you have to still kind of beat your chest and show people that you are an authority. You just don't say, well, I'm a certified financial planner. I know this stuff. No. What does it mean to be a certified financial planner? And how does that affect that education, that authority that I have? How does that affect you uh, with your overall financial plan? Next, uh, you really have to make sure, you know, this goes back to how to win friends and influence people, goes back to Napoleon Hill. In fact, Plato talked about this in the book, The Republic, whatever, 3,000 years ago, I don't know how long ago it was, um, which is people like to do business with people they like, know, and trust. So the other great thing, and Kirk, I love how you highlighted this with Adri, is the reason why people do business with Adri is because Adri's Adriness she puts it out, right? Uh, people know who she is. They feel a connection with her and you have to do the same thing. And if you do that, they're gonna start trusting you because they're seeing your authentic self. And if they like, know, and trust you, they're more likely to go ahead and do business with you. The next thing is scarcity. Now I'm gonna go a uh, little tangent here, which is usually Kirk's job, but I'm gonna go tangent here because um, last year, uh, I was at a, a big conference in Nashville. And uh, by the way, uh, it's called the International Car Wash uh, Group. Uh, you were there? It, it, no, no, so International Car Wash Association. No, so I wasn't at that conference. I was at a different conference. Uh, and I had to go to to another building <clears throat> and um, to, uh, oh, I was, I was at the, I was at, um, uh, the pod podcasting podcast movement. That's where I was. I didn't remember okay. that yesterday, yeah, I but I was at podcast movement. And, uh, so I had to go mail something. So I had to go to a adjoining hotel and, uh, there was all of these people wearing name tags and it said international car wash association. I'm like, what the hell was this all about? There were like 5,000 people there who were all totally nerdy about it. So I of course asked the guy because I'm that person. It's like, what, what is this? We, car washes. What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, I'm heading to a breakout right now on pH. I'm so excited about it. I'm like what the hell? So the reason why I'm talking about this uh, app applies to scarcity is because you can't market to everybody. You just can't, right? You can't spend that much money. You're never going to outspend. But you do. <laughs> but yes, well, all man, brother, you or or a lot of advisors sure as heck try with all of these fits and start marketing things instead of having a very consistent brand foundation, being able to close their eyes and know exactly who their ideal client is that they want to market to. Car wash owners, oh my God, they have, a, they have a conference. You could go to the conference. You're gonna be hanging out with 5,000 prospects. This is the sort of stuff that just blows me away that people are so afraid to have a niche because they're afraid that they're not gonna be enough people. Let's just look at 5,000 people very quickly. 5,000 people, in order to have a great year, you need 1% of those. 1%, that's 50 people. Most of you can't even handle 50 new clients in a year. So anyway, um, and then I'm going to give you, uh, so that, that's just fun. I'm going to give you a podcasting financial services example. I have a friend of mine who I've known for probably about 15 years. He focuses on nurse anesthetists. Many of you have heard me talk about him in the past, but I had a call with him last Friday. Uh, he just went over a million downloads, everybody on his podcast. Uh, he was heading to the national conference for the Nurse Anesthetist Association, uh, and he was on main stage. But it took him seven years before he got the niche really dialed in. And now he, this is another seven years later where he, this is how he generates all of his new business from his, is from his show. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to talk about in Geraldini's seven principles is unity. You need to build a community. This is the environment component, again, kind of coming all the way back to environment, is you have to have a community of people and create unity. 
right? But you also have to understand that when you create this community, you are going to repel people who don't fit into that community. You as a business owner need to understand that abundance mindset and push away that scarcity mindset that, oh, well, I don't want to lose out on that one person. And by not losing out on that one person, you're going to lose out on 5,000 people. And I want to make sure that you are all very clear about that. Did I miss anything on that, Kirk? Nope. Okay. All right. So let's get back to environment here. Let's talk about rubber meets the road here. We just talked about the philosophy. We talked about Cialdini's principles based off research. Now let's talk about best practices. So tell us about the best practices on how you create this environment. By the way, I was just Googling car wash music so I could play that song. But <laughs> Dude, don't do that because we're going to get in trouble with Spotify. We're not allowed to do that. So <clears throat> We're not even the eight. Can't you do no. an eight second clip? Nope. That, that whoever said eight, that, that that's a fallacy that has been, you, it, you can play two notes of car wash. And if it's recognizable by Spotify, they'll take our podcast down. So I'm glad you didn't do that. Thank you, man. I did that before. Don't you remember? I'm sure I did that in a podcast before. Maybe it was when we first started. <laughs> Who's, yeah. our, our first 22 episodes that are no longer <laughs> online. <laughs> We didn't, yeah. they were good enough to be online, but they were barely, but content wise, they were there anyway. So I've really killed the start of this answer. To this okay. We're talking about best practices, dude, go to best practices. Yeah. So you, you really need to get in the mind of your, uh, referral motivations. So how do you get people to want to refer you? Well, you work on helping them become fans, right? So how do you do that? You'd be helpful. Um, you have an environment and you make them look good mm. people love being made look good so when they can refer you um we look pretty good to viola i would yeah. suspect who's become a big part of our podcast today hey viola yeah. <laughs> um and you know because we i should say adri i mean both you know, feel really good about having been introduced and yeah. put together by what we've created here. Right. And we, and just so you guys know, this happens all the time is that our guests um, do really well when they're on our podcast for us sharing what they do. And uh, we're not going to stop doing that. Um, having said that, we're trying to get the most appropriate people to come in and serve you. Yeah. So those are, those were, just think about that from a referral standpoint happens all the time around here. Next thing is you want to make it easy for people to refer you. And how do you do that? You make sure that people know who to refer. So one of the things that Matt is so good at doing, because he's such a pro on podcasts, we have guests is he makes sure that he identifies, he gets them to say, who, who do you want? Right? So that anybody listening will know, and only those people will call. We actually do hear about that too, Matt. We don't do. we? Yeah. That, that people that decide are people that were part of our audience that really resonated with our guest, and it's not everybody, but, um, that's a really cool thing. So know who to refer. So make sure that if you're an advisor in practice, that your clients understand who you want to work with. The obvious thing is people like them, but do they know why they're your niche audience, right? Sometimes they don't, if you're marketing to everybody, so make sure they know who. Next one, and that doesn't mean go on your website and list a bunch of demographics and say, I need people with a million dollars. Don't do that. Um, figure out how to convey things that people with over a million dollars would care about mm -hmm. and understand. That's what you focus on. Make sense? Next is how to refer. Um, what do you, how do you want to be uh, introduced? What's your brand? If you've ever, this has happened many times when I was working on branding is oftentimes advisors would have a brand, but they wouldn't be distributing it and talking about it enough with their clients to reinforce it because you need to be redundant, like crazy with your brand and your, and your message. And what would happen is when it came time for a, a client to refer business, what they would do is they say, Oh, you, you should talk to Matt. He's so trustworthy. I really feel like he sits on the same side of the table as is us and you know and he always gets back to us and you're like that's my brand no mm -hmm. i thought it was working with i'm going to try to say this nurse and anesthetist 
Yeah, Everybody cool. say that three that times fast. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And so you got to be really careful about when you build a brand. If you don't have one, go figure that, that stuff out because it's huge for your business. And you need to, people need to understand how to refer you, right? It should be specific to your niche, which is your brand. Uh, have keywords. And the next thing is where to refer. This one's really cool and it's important, probably overlooked a lot. Find that one thing or a couple things so they have a little bit of a choice that's going to really kickstart an introduction. For example, let's say that Matt and I have a very specific podcast episodes and we do have a couple that we refer to people. Yep. Um, it, it's in our automated system. It says, hey, before you meet with so-and-so, we want to make sure that you've listened to these episodes. Uh, sometimes we get referred to people who aren't fans because people who are fans introduce and they introduce them right. They just want to call us, which is not ideal, by the way. It's more ideal when people get a chance to experience who we are, what we do, and what we're all about and really start understanding and believing in, in, the, in the power of influence and the pathway to influence. But understanding where so if you have an episode that really kind of kickstarts or a couple point ask people to point uh, introductions there referrals that can be really powerful because now they're they're like ah, i really get them okay then everything else has context right yeah. if they were to jump in to a death by referrals part two they might not completely understand what what we do here as an example okay mm -hmm. so make sure they know who to refer to how to refer as in your, your brand, the story and what, you know, what your niche audience is and what you do for people. And the last one is where, so where they refer, what specifically do you want them to point somebody to, to start experiencing you? And it shouldn't be a meeting with you. It can be, but let them make that decision. Yeah. So hope that helps. Yeah. Um, what should people do? Yeah. How? <laughs> yeah. So there are really, I think, three pieces that are missing consistently when we talk about getting referrals. And referrals, a lot of a lot of advisors are, and RIAs are struggling with referrals. Everybody's looking to marketing to fill the gaps, and that's part of the reality of what's going on in the world. But you can be a lot better at at getting referrals by leveraging the content and the environment that you're going to create on the other side of it, which is trying to attract prospects, right? So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta figure out your brand. You gotta have a strong message. You gotta have a clear message. You gotta have a nice message. You gotta figure that out. You gotta have a mindset and a commitment to create value over and over again and to provide that in different ways. So don't just do podcasting. Don't just do video. Don't just write blog posts. Try to do a combination of those things and push your stuff out there. If you can speak, um, if you can get quoted in uh, journals, professional journals where your audience hang out, those are all really good things. And then most importantly is, uh, or maybe not most importantly, but you can have all those things, but you don't have a game plan mm -hmm. on how to put those things in action and have somebody follow through with it, then you're really not going to be any further ahead. Yeah. So make sure you have a game plan and Matt's going to tell you how you can start solving all these things. I think when we, when we wrap this up, I have a sneaking suspicion that he might do that. <laughs> so, so those are how you get that done. We provide all of you with everything Kirk just said, and there are two different tracks that you can take with Proudmouth. You can go to the Pod Rocket Academy and go to podrocketacademy.com. You can get your free trial. Uh, you can download a whole bunch of stuff because we've got like the brand basics worksheet. We've got a great marketing planning um, thing that Indigo Marketing helped us build. Um, actually, Full Circle, Adri Miller. Heckman has an amazing course in the Pod Rocket Academy. So if you're a do-it-yourself or if you have a great team in place that they are craving for great marketing education that's compliant, send them to the Pod Rocket Academy, make the investment. They get eight hours of office hours a month with the paid version. That's what you need to do. 
or if it is the who, not how philosophy that you have in life and you need to find that who instead of you trying to figure it out yourself, just have us do it for you. We've done 7,000 episodes and over a quarter of a million social media posts for advisors using everything that we're talking about today. We help you build that environment. We're gonna do what we can using our expertise to help you accelerate your influence, have a great podcast, have great pieces of content that are going out to your ideal clients in the right platform and when they're there. And if you want to know more about all of that, please make sure that you click the link in the show notes. That's going to give you an opportunity to either join the Pod Rocket Academy or to schedule some time with our people here who can do a free demo for you and talk a little bit more about who we are and what we do. So with that, for Kirk and all of us here at Proudmouth, this is Matt Halloran, and we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-